Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. We are all welcome to church this morning. Can we stand on our feet as we worship God? Let's begin to worship His holy name. Father, we worship your name this morning, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, for your mercy. We thank you for you, our God. You are the Lord forever. Your throne shall reign. Thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning. Thank you because we are not in symmetry nor mortuary. We are in your presence. We say thank you, Lord. 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 Blessed be your name, O Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Father, we give you glory. Be glorified, be lifted, our Lord Jesus. Be lifted, our mighty God. We exalt your name for bringing us to your presence. We say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. We give you glory. Lord, we pray, Lord, have your way in our fellowship today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, it's you we want to see. We don't want to see men. Meet every one of us at the point of our knees. Let your blood speak on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Everything that is disarranged in our life, let your peace enter into it this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, let's go to our devotion this morning. The topic of our devotion says uh, divine contact. Divine contact. And our text is from Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke chapter 7, 11 to, to 15. Okay, I'll read from this place. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciple and a large crowd went along with him. As they approached the town gate, a dead man was being carried out, the, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd followed the town with, with, was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the ground they were carrying him on. And the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, that touch was not just an ordinary touch. It was divine contact. It was a divine contact the dead boy had with the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, I believe our God also is ready. What he did in the past, he still has the power to do it today. The Lord will divinely touch you today in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. You can see the case of this woman. It was an hopeless situation. Firstly, the husband has died. He has the money over that. She has been able to over, 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 overcome that situation with the presence of, of, of her son. And now the son also is taken away. But the Lord turned the situation around. I don't know whatever situation you are passing through this morning, divine contact will enter into it in the name of yeah. Jesus. Money will be exchanged for laughter in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. Let's quickly look at what our Father and the Lord wrote here. Our memory verse is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 21. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Amen. And I had it. Indeed, she was old. There are contacts and relationships that are highly beneficial to all parties. Such contacts leave those who are involved in perpetual joy. On the other hand, there are some contacts that become the undoing of the person involved. Divine contact, however, means the contact between God and his created order, man inclusive. When God made contact with a person, place or thing, that particular object of contact becomes special. And that is a truth. Well, that is true. When you read through the Bible, everywhere Jesus, is, Jesus went to, everywhere he, he, he had an encounter with anyone or anything, that thing never remained the same. 
No, the, 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 because God is divine, Jesus carried the presence of God. His contact, even with the, the woman, it was even actually it was a woman that touched Jesus. Not Jesus that touched the woman, but still the power of God still went through it. Hallelujah. So Amen. his contact is always a special one. The object that come in contact with the divine immediately experiences a positive turnaround. In the case of Christ's contact, is not for negative. It's everywhere he goes, anyone he touched, is it always turned to positive. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus touched the five loaves of bread and two fishes in Matthew chapter 14, verse 19, they multiplied and became enough to fill thousands of people as recorded in Matthew chapter 14 verse 20. And they did and they did all eat and were filled and they took up all the fragments of the remaining 12 basket full. So you can see just five loaves of bread and two fishes and everything turned around. That is the vine contact. No, God also is ready to touch you today and make things turn around for your good in the name Amen. of Jesus. A touch from Jesus can uproot a generic problem, a ge genetic problem. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 4, Jesus touched a leper and leprosy disappeared. You can imagine, just the touch of our Lord Jesus, because he's not an ordinary touch, he's a divine touch. He's a touch that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Leprosy disappeared immediately. A man who has been blind for more than 40 years also regained his sight through a divine touch, as we see in John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7. Whatever the source of your problem, the divine content can turn the situation around. Beloved, the good news is that you can initiate a divine touch if you believe. Like the case of that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. She was the one that initiated it, not Jesus Christ. I believe it may be it's the Spirit of God in, in, in her. Because Jesus called her daughter that make her to take that step of faith. So we need to know that you can initiate this touch. You may not sit down there expecting God to come and meet you like that man at the pool of Belshazzar. You, you can initiate it and God will step in. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 21, Matthew chapter 9, verse 21, we see that a woman touched Jesus Christ as she was made whole. The widow, in this text we, we read this morning, no, she was going to bury her only son. However, Jesus made contact with her son, and that day, according to Luke chapter 7, verse 15, he that was there sat up and began to speak. I pray everything that has, been, that has died in your life, in my life, they will arise today in the name of Jesus. They will start to do their destiny, what God has proposed them to do, what God has fashioned needs to do right from the, the creation. Before the creation, they will start doing it. That dead man, that dead boy, is, is sat up and immediately started talking. So hopelessness became awful. A situation that is dead became alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Today you will experience a miracle contact Amen. with your maker and you will begin to enjoy the benefit of adoption in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. For you to experience divine contact, however, you must study those who have had this experience before. That is very important. When you are lacking in a particular area and you see someone that is exactly in it, wisdom demands that you run after them and learn how they do their things. Amen. And you too can emulate from it. You, however, need to have an unwavering faith in the infallible word of God. Most of these people that God met, they have strong faith. That woman, you can imagine that faith. He said, if I could touch the aim of, a, of his garment in the midst of thick crowd, and he saw that has been on blood, that the blood has been flowing for a good 12 years, it simply means that she's frail, she's, she's weak. But in the midst of a present crowd, she keep on pressing and pressing until she reached Jesus' side. So it means that she has a strong faith in God. She's not letting it go. She believes that once I get to him, solution will come. The same thing with you. You must not have plan B. You must not put God there and be looking for how to run to Sangoma. It will not work. You need to have 
on unwavering faith in the word of God and you will experience the divine talk. Demonstrate, demonstrate this by having a high regard for God's word and keeping to his tenets. You need to keep to God's commandments, his ordinances. When you hold on to it firmly, you are not letting it go. No matter the storm that comes, you will discover that God will touch you. The power in the word of God will foster your divine contact today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So that is what we have for us today, divine contact. I, I, I would like us to pray. I don't know the area of your life that you want God to touch you. God is here. God is in our midst. His power has not reduced. The power that healed that woman with 12, issue, uh, 12 years of issue of blood is still available. The power that, that raised that boy that is dead, that, that is about to be buried, that he made him to start up and start talking, that power is still remain the same. Because God make us to understand that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So the power of God is not diminishing. Then you, you are not getting divine contact with the Lord. He it simply means the force is from us. It simply means that we are the ones that are not doing the required. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So I want us to pray this morning. We are going to pray that the Lord should help us to position ourselves to divine contact so that we will surrender our lives to him completely. Let's close our eyes. Daddy Lord, position us, O Lord. Help us to position ourselves for your divine touch, for your divine contact as we surrender our lives to you completely in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we pray this morning, Lord, enable us to position ourselves for divine contact in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us, O oh Lord, help us, mighty God, to position ourselves for your divine touch, that it touch every situation of our life, O oh Lord. Everything that is dead, let them come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every day situation, we speak life to them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We oh, position ourselves, oh mighty name, we are Amen. We shall receive divine touch this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity given unto us to witness this day. Father, may your name alone be praised in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we have come, O oh God, this evening, Lord, under the throne of mercy to learn and to listen to you, Father, Lord, from the throne of mercy. God, speak to us in the name of Jesus. At the end of this uh, meeting this morning, Lord, we pray our life will never remain the same for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' marvelous name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I welcome to today's uh, Sunday school. Uh, last week, we learned uh, sexual intimacy in marriage, part one where we have been told several benefits several benefits associated with sexual intimacy in marriage don't forget this is sex in marriage sexual intimacy in marriage not outside marriage we have been told um, how husband and wife can benefit from this act as the Lord himself has already commanded us that it is not a sin to get married and it is not a sin to enjoy the marriage as well. I pray that the grace to enjoy our marriages God shall grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning we'll be looking at uh, part two, sexual intimacy. Sexual intimacy in marriage, part two. Our Bible our reading is taken from the book of um, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2 to 5. I read from here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter chapter seven, verse two to five. Nevertheless, 
to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Unto the husband. And, uh, okay, and likewise unto also unto the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. The fraud ye not one the, uh, the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment, for I knew, I would, that all men were even as I myself, but every man had his power, had, that every man had his proper gift of God, one after, his, uh, after this manner, and another after that. Praise the Lord. Amen. We see uh, what our text, you know, uh, told us about Mary, about a man having his own wife, and about a woman also having her own husband as well. We have learned that sexual intimacy creates special bond between a man and his wife with basic facts supported by the scriptures and its numerous benefits. Like I said last week, uh, we were exposed to several benefits we are uh, both a uh, couple, you know, can enjoy and also, you know, benefit from each other, from the husband side and also the wife side as well. They are numerous. It is equally necessary to discuss some of the to discuss some of the uh, challenges facing couples in the area of sexual intimacy. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like I said earlier, this is for marriage. Is in marriage, sexual intimacy in marriage. There are some things that even Christians are not aware of, or they don't even have time for it. But Bible made us to know that these are for us to enjoy them in marriage. I pray God will open our eyes to see more this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It should be noted that in some homes or family, certain problems or conflict can be traced to unsatisfactory sexual relationships. We can see that from our test, that even there are some people, like last week we were told, some people can even enjoy that, oh no, we want to pray, we want to fast. After finishing seven days prayer and fasting, you continue another one, 21 days prayer and fasting, another one, 40 days prayer and fasting. You see, you need to consider the other partner. You need to consider yourself and also consider the faith of the other person. So this must be in agreement. And when the other party is saying, no, I think we have to stop, it's not a sin. You have to reason with each other. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. The good news is that these challenges can be remedied. Mm -hmm. These challenges can be solved if we are ready, you know, to, to solve them. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some couples are too spiritual, even in marriage, that they don't even talk about their sexual life. I mean, between husband and wife. They are too spiritual that they don't even know the love language or sex language of the other person. They are too spiritual to the extent that they cannot even talk about how maybe I maybe they are enjoying each other or you need to improve or you need to you know to understand this aspect. You need they are too spiritual. And unfortunately, some couples can also learn this from outside. I pray God will help us and our marriage shall stand in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I sometimes I used to discuss with my friend that when you are in a relationship and you don't have time to discuss with your wife or you don't have time to discuss with your husband, be rest assured that somebody is taking your place in terms of discussion, in terms of taking your, you know, your husband or your wife's attention. You need to pay attention to that. 
You are on phone 24 7. You don't even have time to discuss with your wife your spiritual life, her sexual life. With no time, you don't have time for it. It is not normal. God is telling us this morning we should come back home and solve all this issue. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From our, our Bible passage, from um, our First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, we can also see that fornication is a menace which the devil employs to distract you from marriage. Fornication. Some people, uh, you know, they even devote their times to be fornicating around without thinking about, you know, settling down, without uh, thinking about, you know, asking God for the way out. It is the devil's ploy to blindfold the youth from getting married. The Almighty God provides some solutions to marital infidelity or fornication and adultery. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Instead of you to be fornicating around, Instead of you to be messing up around, there is a remedy, there is a solution for that, which is marriage. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I said, these are for Christians. These are for Christians, uh, you know, those that are married, and those that are not yet married as well. If there is a remedy for you to solve that aspect of your life, that you are messing up around, there is a remedy, there is a solution. Settle down, ask God for godly uh, you know, a godly uh, man or godly woman in your life. I pray God shall direct you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. This among others is, is, uh, is marriage. That is the solution to it. Instead of you to be messing up around, instead of you to be you know, fornicating around, you have solution. Get married. And at the same time, you are not getting married because of sex. You are not getting married because you want to satisfy yourself, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sexually. There are some other benefits that are associated with that. If your belief or your, your, um, your, your, your belief is because you want to satisfy yourself sexually, that is why you are going to marry. No, that cannot work. Praise the Lord. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. But based on the con uh, context of our, our study today, is one of the you know is the best solution for you know to solve this problem of fornication is to get married is to get settled down with the woman or the man of your life or the man of your dream as god is directing you as god is laying into your head into your mind this morning i pray god will help us in the name of jesus god said let every man have his own wife and let every man every woman have her own husband Hallelujah. Amen. We can see that in verse 2. It said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, to solve the problem of this fornication, to escape from the sin of fornication, let every man, let every woman have his own wife or his own husband. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. He said, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Praise the Lord. We can also see there are some other solutions that we can also uh, see in our test today. This will also help us to avoid, you know, uh, to avoid sinning, to avoid, you know, being ruled by the devil. Praise the Lord. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. In verse 3 of our test, he said, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, due kindness. Hallelujah. You cannot just be too busy that you don't have time for your wife. You cannot just be too busy that you don't have time for your husband. We a lot we have heard about of you know uh, uh, about um, uh, Christian homes that are being broken, that are being shattered. Even they are they, 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 they are in faith, but unfortunately they mess it up. Maybe when the, the wife will travel and just you know uh, leave the husband and the house or housemaid you know, back home before you know what happened something uh, uh, problematic or something terrible happen. What is happening? You need to consider that. I pray God will help us for our home shall stand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let the husband, let the wife render unto wife unto husband due kindness. Don't be selfish. Hallelujah. Don't be selfish. 
And also the husband likewise also had to the oh, okay. Now verse uh, verse three. He said the wife had not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband had no power of his own body, but the wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. You own each other. Oh, I think I'm okay for the rest of the month. I don't need to touch my wife. I think I'm okay, my daddy husband, for the rest of the month. Don't touch me anymore. No, you don't need to be selfish. We need to balance the, the scale. The scale must be balanced. I pray God will help us and will open our eyes of understanding this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 5 said, Defraud ye not one the other. You see? Once you see yourself say, I'm okay, I'm satisfied, you don't even think about the other person. You don't even think about the need of others. No, you don't need to be selfish. You don't need to defraud. It's not, it's not until you steal your husband's money or until you, you know, mismanage your wife's resources. No, you don't need to defraud your wife. You don't need to defraud your husband. We need to balance it. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Except it be with consent. For a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer. You must consent your wife, you must consent your husband. You don't need to embark on long, you know, uh, prayer and fasting. I say, no, I think I need to dedicate my, myself to God. Let's dedicate ourselves to our body to God in the next 40 days, in the next 100 days. No, you don't need to defraud one another. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. We have seen a lot of this. This can also restore to, you know, uh, many challenges in, man, in, in marriage. I think God will help us in the name of Jesus. I mm -hmm. uh, want to check our, our lesson outline. Outline one. Uh, likely causes of sexual intimacy challenges in marriage. Praise the Lord. He said, why some challenges of sexual intimacy are spiritual? Quite a lot of these challenges can be traced to the following. We all know that the challenges in marriage can be spiritual at times. But we can also see that there are some of these things that we created ourselves. There are some of these things that we even caused by ourselves. We want to see some of these. Number one, myth, misconception, wrong cultural orientations or unscriptural, or, uh, uh, unscriptural spiritual education about sex. E.g., women should not initiate sex or enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We see that is coming from husband's side. If your wife calls on you or he asks for it, uh -uh, why are you doing this? Like you are messing up around. It's like you are, no, oh, you are a Christian. No, you need to be spiritual. No. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is not what our Bible is telling us. That is not what God is telling us. You don't need to have that that misconception that no, women must not ask for it. Women must not initiate it. No. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, fear of conceiving another baby. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is another issue, especially the young couple. I think one is okay by me. I think two is okay by me. We don't need to give birth again. On, you know, due to this, they are denied themselves of this sexual intimacy. They are denied themselves of this player. They are denied themselves of this benefit associated with marriage. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Our study this morning says some couples either lack the knowledge of appropriate family planning techniques or have refused to deploy the techniques that can prevent it. Unwanted pregnancy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you know that, yo, I think I have four now, we are okay. There is a solution to that. You can go for family planning and you start enjoying yourself. You start enjoying your marriage. You start enjoying your life. Hallelujah. We don't need to deny ourselves of sexual um, um, pleasure because we don't want more children or we are, we are done, you know, with bearing uh, uh, children. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. As we see in uh, chapter 4, says, said, people, my people are perished. For the lack of knowledge, the solution are outside there. The solution are outside there. You can apply. It's not a sin. Do family plan. If you know that yes, the four kids that you've already have are okay, or the two that you already have, but it must be in agreement with other person. Not the man that will be telling the way. I think we are okay. We are done now. We the only two we have is okay. We don't even need to touch each other again. No, marriage is beyond that. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The third point is 
previous experience of sexual abuse, directly or indirectly. Hallelujah. In some of some people, you know, who are experienced, you know, rape or you know, um, you know uh, issues around this um, sexual act, because of that, they continue to deny their husband or their wife in marriage this sex because they've already abused or before they have already abused and they are using that experience, you know, to, to treat their partner even in marriage. We need to apply wisdom and the old things must pass away and you must, you know, begin to live a new life. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, no, point number four, libido, sex drive, issues or inadequate foreplay. Inability to discover or exploit the erogenous part of the body. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I said, this is for marriage. There are some, there are some husband or wife that doesn't even know the, 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 the sensitive part of their partner. These are the things that we need to discover. Some people, you can even touch their hair. Maybe that is the next thing. You continue to play. Hallelujah. Some people is even know. Some people it can even be kids. You need to identify that in your partner. I pray God will open our eyes this morning to see more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Part five is health challenges, which may either be physiological or psychological. Example: erectile dysfunction, uh, frigidity, uh, cold uh, heartedness, or not in the mood syndrome. Hallelujah! Amen. God created us. You know, in a unique way. There are some people, they will never be in the mood in the next few years. Hallelujah. Yeah. What if it happened to a woman? Maybe the woman will never be in the mood for sex. Will never be in the mood. Or the husband will never. No time. Always working, always traveling. You are not in the mood. And the same time, you need to think about the other partner. Hallelujah. Yeah. This needs to be solved. This needs to be put, I know, need to be stopped for you to enjoy your marriage. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Infidelity or lack of trust. So people, instead of you to, you know, to, uh, you know, to perform your duty at home, you've already exploited those ladies outside there. So people to enjoy your husband at home, you've already exploited your managers outside there. When you now get to my thing, I don't, I'm satisfied already from outside. That is not supposed to be. I pray God will help us this morning. Our marriage shall work in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes sexual appetite decreases in women after menopause, whereas there is minimal decline in the sexual drives of men as well. So when you get to that age, it's likely it is possible. And I think study has already shown that even men, you know. You, they always active even to the old age, and the women may not. But because you want your marriage to work, because you don't want your husband to go outside and mess up and eventually lose his eternity, you need to endure that. You need to encourage that. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lack of understanding of love language or things that turn them on or off. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to identify or understand what turn our partner on and off. There are some little, there, 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 there are some men. In fact, sometimes you know men can be in the mood that you are coming. The wife is coming, coming with a financial issue. Say, dear, yeah, I think you you know that money that you promised me. And before you know what happened, the mood will switch off. You need to understand that. You need to identify that. Likewise, it can also happen. To women as well. You know that your, your wife has already labored all day, has worked through all day. Now you want your touch. And before you started, you know, you know, mentioning all her mistakes, I think the food you cook is not delicious. This, 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 before you know what happened, the mood will disappear. I pray God will teach us the best way to address this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Communication issues and busy schedules. Hallelujah. Amen. Communication issues. If you and your wife are not talking, you are in the south and your husband is in the north, you don't even talk. Sometimes two weeks, there is a problem. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a problem. You, that communication issues need to be solved. And your schedule, you also need to, you know, to, you know, to include your, your family plans as well, your family schedule as well. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Environmental factors. Being conscious of the presence of the third party in the surroundings, children, relatives, neighbors, unpleasant noise. 
This also happens, you know, for those people, you know, maybe you have four kids and you are living in a two-bedroom apartment, you know. In fact, before you do any other things, everybody will hear at home. So, all this you need to apply wisdom as well. Hallelujah. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. If there is a mutual understanding between you and your couple, you know when the environment will be silent, when the environment will be conducive, when the children have already gone to school or gone to something, you know, went out to do something, you can even send them an error so that you can enjoy yourself. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lesson number two. Some remedies for sexual intimacy challenge. Some of the remedies, number one, prayer. You need to be prayerful. We've already identified those things, but not everything, not all everything that requires prayer here. You need to, you know, to, 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 to put my effort. You need to act. Hallelujah. You don't need to, you know, to, to, you know, to ascribe all the issues to the devil. You, need, you yourself need to apply wisdom and address what you should address. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. He said, couple should commit their sex life into God's hands and at the same way they do for other aspects of their life. This is great antidote to the, to the uh, demonic influences. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prayer. Prayer is the key. And at the same time, you need to act. When you know, when you know that there is, there is a need for amendment, amen your way. Amen your schedule. Amen your way of life. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, another, remed, uh, another remedy is uh, counseling. It is not a shameful thing to seek medical or psychological help when faced with sexual intimacy challenge. You need to know. So people even got married, they don't even know their, you know, the, the, the past experience of their partner. Like, why are you, why are you not enjoying this thing? Why are you? I, just tell me. Before you know what I say, ah, when I was five years, I was raped by my uncle, I was doing this. Now you now know. There is a problem you need to work out. There is a problem you need to find solution for. If you try it, if you try to solve it on your own, if it doesn't work, you can also employ counselors. You can employ those people that you know that they can address this. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Communication. If you observe that your sex life is one, is on decline, bring up the topic and talk about it. Hallelujah. Talk about it. Once you notice that this is what is wrong in my body, this is what is wrong in my, in, in my sexual intimacy with my, with my husband or with my spouse, you need to talk about it. Come and tell me. Darling, tell me what is happening. Think this thing is changing. Why? You are not enjoying this. What is happening? Let's find solution to it. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We don't need to be too spiritual uh, without discussing what we know that is wrong with our marriage. What we know that is wrong with our sexual life. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even sometimes when you know that I think you realize that hey, you are weak, even you know, in, you know, in performing your duty. You are not that I think I'm not more functioning well. My dear, why can't you find a solution? I think maybe you should seek uh, medical attention. I think you should do this. I think you need to discuss it. You need to communicate to your spouse. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Time and stress management. Married couples, uh, married couples should create time out of their tight schedule to be intimate and cut off stress inducing factors as much as possible. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, many people say, no, when, as soon as I finish from office, that is all. I don't bring my laptop home. I don't work at home. That is, maybe that is a time for family. We need to cut out the stress, what is stressing us, all those schedules that is taking our time away, even from having time for our couple, uh, for our spouse. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Self-development. Couples should look inward and work on their weakness an immediate environment that could turn off either of the party hallelujah mm -hmm. you need to develop it you need to learn it it's not that you go outside and learn it from unbeliever or to go and learn it in a way that is even you know uh, contrary to the scripture you need to address it learn it develop it self-development in what you think that your spouse needs or your spouse requires. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. We have learned a lot of things this morning about our sexual intimacy, some of the challenges associated with it, even in marriage. And I pray our marriage shall work in the name of Jesus. Amen. We shall not experience broken home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In summary, admonitions of uh, Apostle Paul to the couples in 1 Corinthians, which says, Let the husband then that unto the wife, deal benevolence, deal kindness, and likewise also the wife unto husband. It's a very good solution that if prayerfully applied, can solve many sexual intimacy challenges. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Don't be too spiritual not to take, talk about your sex life with your spouse. Don't be too spiritual that you don't want improvement. You want your wife or your husband to enjoy your, uh, the sex life or the sexual intimacy in marriage. You need to discuss it. You need to talk it out. You need to know what is happening and how it can be solved. I pray God will help us this morning in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, avoiding your spouse, especially in the area of sexual, uh, sexual intimacy, is creating a space that will be occupied by something or someone. Hallelujah. Amen. Your spirituality cannot solve that. Blood run through your veins. Water run through your body. You also feel that. You also feel that sexual hurt. If you don't create time for your spouse, you don't create time for your husband, your wife, don't forget something else or someone else who occupy that position. I pray nobody will take our place in marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nobody will take our place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Say, Lord, Father, Father. help couples to humbly accept their fault and for tune out their marital intimacy challenge in the name of Jesus. Help couple, help Christian marriages to humbly accept their fault, to humbly accept their fault and for tune and find that and find solution to their marital intimacy challenge in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray, God, oh God, my marriage shall work. There will be any problem in the name of Jesus. I shall walk in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and just pray. If you are married, pray to God. If you are not married, pray to God that your marriage will work. That everything that concerns your marriage, God will perfect it. God will make it to be perfected. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. 
We glorify your holy name because you are in faith, Father. You are God that never fails. You are God that will never fail. Lord, we worship you. We glorify your holy name. Lord, we worship you. We magnify you, Lord. Faithful are you, who Lord Jehovah. Faithful are you, who Lord, the King of all things. Lord, we honor your holy name, Father. Lord, we give you all the praise, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. We glorify you, Lord. Because you are a faithful Father. You are the Lord of all us, Lord. Oh, my Jesus, 
all of you this morning. We stand in all of you, mighty God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. You are worthy, Lord. We say, Lion of Judah. We worship you this morning. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. There is none like you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We worship your name, Lord. We say, be thou exalted, O Lord, be glorified, be lifted up, mighty God. People of God, let's magnify the name of the Lord. He is a faithful God, he is a righteous God. There is no other God like him. Father, we worship you tonight, this morning, Lord. We give you glory, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. If we have thousands of tongues, still we should not be enough. We praise you, Lord, receive our praise, Lord Jesus. Receive our praise, mighty God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the grace of being alive. Thank you for your provision. Thank you because you are God that answers prayer. As we have said in your ears, yes, so you will do. We worship your name this morning, Lord. We say, be thou exalted, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. You think I will turn to Isaiah 25? Isaiah 25, verse 1 says, Lord, you are my God. He's a popular son. He say, Oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsel of all are faithful and of Your friend. 
set free this morning in the name of Jesus. And we break every yoke. Every yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. We break every yoke in our lives. We break every yoke of our progress. We break every yoke over the move of God in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that the Lord will we do your will. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, let our light shine forth this morning. Let our light shine forth as we are the children of the light. We are the sons of the light. We proclaim light into every dark situation of our life. We decree light to every dark situation of our homes. We decree light to every dark situation in our career, in our work with the Lord. We decree light in the name of Jesus. We decree light in the name of Jesus. We proclaim light, the light of God. Let it begin to shine over every darkness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your light shine, O Lord. Let your light shine, O Lord, and let your glory be our rear guide of God. Let's pray this morning that the glory of God will be our rear guide. The glory of God will be our rear guide. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree your light. We decree your light to every area of our lives. And let your glory be our rear guide in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Last we speak of God, I want us to pray. As we come to the presence of God this morning, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding should to add his way, to permit every area of our life. We declare peace this morning in the name of Jesus to every chaos situation in our life. We declare peace in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare your peace, O Lord. Let your peace permit every darkness in our life, every unholy thing, Lord. Let them be whole, let them be perfect. We declare peace this morning in the name of Jesus. We pronounce your peace to every stormy situation in our life. We pronounce your peace in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. Father, add your way. Peace in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I want you to cry to God this morning. Still in the attitude of prayer. I just want to raise one prayer point before we go to the walk. I want you to say, Father, Father every area of my life, every of my life where, I where I am having issues, I, I take it, Lord, that you are the helper that can help. I can do nothing without you. Help me, oh Lord. Can we lift up our voice and just begin to pray now? Help me, oh Lord. Help me, oh Lord. Help me, hold on, help me, hold on. Come on, lift up your voice this morning and just ask for help. The helper of the helpless is in the house this morning and is allowing you to cry to him so that he can help you. Lord, help me, help me, help me. Talk to God on that thing that you want God to help you for. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Every of my, every challenges that I am facing, every area that I am facing, Lord, I am asking for your help. I am asking for your help. Help me, Lord. Help me, oh Lord. Help me, oh Lord. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God that God should help you. God, help me. The helper is in the house this morning. Lord, help out the helpless. Please help me, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord Jehovah. We glorify your holy name, Father. We worship you because you are a faithful Father. Thank you because you are God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, we appreciate you this morning. We give you all the praise because you are God. Thank you because you are a faithful Father. Thank you for answering all our prayers. Lord, we have cried to you this morning for peace. The peace that passes all understanding release unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you are the helper of the helpless, Father, we ask that Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, we cry to you this morning that Lord, every of our areas, every areas of our life, when the devil is inching us, we receive deliverance from above in the name of Amen. Jesus. As we listen to your word once again, speak to us from above in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let only your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. I surrender my tongue into your hands, Lord. Breathe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
not my word, but your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. At the end of the day, let all glory be brought to you, Lord, and let all blessings be hearts, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Can I hear a better amen? In Jesus' name, we are praying. Please sit down in magnis- uh, sit down in the presence of our magnificent uh, God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome once again to church today. I believe, I trust God that our week has been very, very faithful and uh, fruitful. I want to believe God has been faithful in our lives and he has, he has done great things during the week. And we have cause to give God a testimony. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today we want to continue on our series. For those of us who are just listening to us, we have been having a series on Psalm 23. And uh, over the past four weeks, we've just been only been able to deal with verse 1. Verse 1. So let's read together Psalm 23 and verse 1. Psalm 23 and verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Amen. So briefly, we've been talking about this psalm. We have said Psalm 23 is the commonest and the most quoted psalm in the, in the scripture. And we said that it's quoted in music, it's quoted in literature. We concluded, uh, I mean, we said that it is, it is quoted in music and literature because it's very relatable. It inspires, it's comfort, it calms down. Hallelujah. Amen. We said, if you understand the heart of the shepherd, then it will help you to entrust him in all that he has given you. It will also help you to be at peace in a troubled world. It will help you to have assurance that God is in charge of your life. We said, if you understand uh, this psalm very well, you will know that no scheme of hell can plot you away from God's hand. We, we, we've talked about that verse 1 very well in details. We said that when the Bible says, use the word D, it means that there are many gods, but there's only one God. The God, the Lord is my shepherd. The only one Lord. We said the shepherd is somebody that takes control of everything. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to start with verse 2 today. And by God's grace, verse 2 of this of this uh, chapter is also going to give us four blessings. Now, so join me to open your scriptures to Psalm 23 and verse 2. Psalm 23 and verse 2. And we're going to read it together. Psalm 23, verse 2. If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say wait for me. Okay, I'm waiting for those who are not yet there. Hallelujah. So I hope we are all there now. Let's read it together. The Bible says, one, two, three, go. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the sea waters. Can we do it again? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the sea waters. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to look today that, I mean, we're going to look at the first part of that verse. He makes me to lie down. He makes me to lie down. If you recollect previously, we have said that David was once a shepherd. And as a shepherd, he understands what is the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep? So when he's saying that the Lord is my shepherd, we say that he's now saying making the Lord the shepherd and trusting himself to be the sheep under the shepherd. Now, verse 2a says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, one thing that you must take note of is that David is now saying the shepherd makes me to do what? To lie down in green shepherds. In green pastures. Sorry. 
And there must be a reason why David is saying he makes me to lie down. I'm not going to join with that reason this, this morning. I'm going to talk about it in the next week. But David understands. He has experience. He has experience. Now, you, you must take note of something. Because the scripture made us understand that David was once a shepherd, is now a sheep. He understands the, the, the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep. And if you recollect, one of the things that we said about the sheep is that the shepherd, I mean the sheep, is very dumb, is very dirty, is dependent, is very fearful. And because of all these reasons, we must note that the sheep doesn't lie down. I don't know whether you are getting me. On the, in a natural state, sheep doesn't lie down. They are always hungry. They are always looking for food. Looking for things to do. And that's a typical attitude of us men. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't lie down. You know, when, when I was preparing the message, I was listening to some of the messages that relates to this. I understand. You find some people going all out about. I heard about someone who works from, especially when you are outside of your domain, outside of your comfort area. Maybe you are you are abroad, as they used to say, you are overseas. You find some people working shifts, eight to eight to eight to five, seven to seven to six. They are not lying down. Praise the Lord. And this can be seen. You know, when someone dies today, what do we say? We say, may his soul rest in peace. Now, if you look at that statement and change it, it then means that while the person was still on this earth, there's no rest. There's no rest. And so today, when David was now saying, he makes me to lie down. David is saying, he makes me to rest. It means that he, he gives me, he orchestrates rest. He gives me rest. So briefly today, in the next few minutes, I want to talk about rest. Hallelujah. I want to relate the word, he makes me to lie down as rest. Hallelujah. So what is rest? Praise the name of the Lord. But before, before we define what rest is, let's look at some of the words that rest is synonymous to. In, in, in the Greek word, it's what they call anoposis. And anoposis means cessation. Praise the Lord. It means cessation. It means refreshment. I decree to somebody this morning, God will give you refreshment in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible rest also means cease from work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To rest means to cease of work or movement in order to relax or refresh oneself or recover strength. The question is, is it possible for us to get rest? And why are we saying this? Because in, in, in the 21st century that we are in, we don't have time. You know, somebody, that's, that's one of the things that we used to say. We say, I've got no time. Right? If God were to give us an opportunity to have more hours to the day, we say, ah, no, okay, that should be fine. 24 hours is no more enough for us. We've got no time. There are a lot of things, social network, TV, all those things, taking up our time. So we don't have time again. We have limited time. And some people, we have some of us, we have what we call worker only lifestyles. Everything is work. 
work, 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 work. To the extent that many homes have become restless. There's no time for each other again. A lot of people are tired. A lot of people are weary. A lot of people are weak. A lot of people are dry. A lot of people, people are beaten up. A lot of people are worn out. A lot of people are run down. And you know what? If you have a battery in your phone and you don't charge it, after some time, the battery will go down. We run down. There's no more sense of spirituality. In fact, our current generation, our spirituality is even lower. But I have here to declare to you, amidst all of this thing, rest is possible. Tell your neighbor, rest is possible. Rest is possible. Amidst all of these things, God can still make you to lie down. But only if you make him your shepherd. David knows this very well. He said, he makes me to lie down. He makes me to lie down. Even though I am restless as a sheep, even though I am restless as a sheep, God still makes me to lie down. God still knows the right environment. That's why next week we're going to talk about the green pastures. Brethren, I'm here to declare to you that rest is possible. Rest is possible from sorrows. Rest is possible from struggles. Rest is possible from strivings. Rest is possible from labor. Rest is possible from fear. Rest is possible from weariness. Rest is possible from any form of troubles that you are going through. He only needs you to make him yourself. He only needs you to trust the shepherd. And you see rest being possible. Once again, I declare to you this morning, and I decree, every struggles, every sorrows, every strivings, every labor, every fear, every weariness that you are going through, God will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. I say God will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Exodus chapter 23, verse 12. Exodus chapter 23, verse 12 says, Six days shall thou do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thy ox and thy ass may rest, and the son of thy animal and the stranger may be refreshed. The plan of God for your life is to experience rest. Like I said, the sheep is a restless, is a restless animal. But despite all these things, David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What did he say again? He said, He makes me to lie down. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. Isaiah 14, 3 says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest. I thought somebody would say amen to that. Amen. Say, The Lord shall give thee rest. Hallelujah. The Lord will give you rest in the name of Jesus. From your sorrow, the Lord will give you rest in the name of Jesus. From your fear, the Lord shall give you rest in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 14, 3 says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give you rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, from the armed bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Brethren, the game plan of the enemy is that you will continue to serve. God is saying, deliverance is possible from servitude in the name of Jesus. Rest is possible. Many of us, we fear of tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be for us. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 12 says, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet the wound not heal. God is saying to you and to me this morning, there's a rest in him. What he just needs us to do is to hear him, to make him our shepherd. He wants us to follow the shepherd. Rest 
is possible. Tell your neighbor, rest is possible. Rest is possible. If rest is not possible, God will not say it in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that what labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. God is going to give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. So rest, if I might give my own definition, rest is God in the midst of war. No matter how restless the world is, rest is God in the midst of war. The presence of God in the midst of war. Because when you are in the presence of God, no matter what is surrounding you, God gives you rest. Hallelujah. Amen. God gives you rest. And brethren, we face many wars in this life. We face many struggles. Is it bodily war that we face? Hallelujah. When you look at our body, our body may be facing war bodily. Hallelujah. If you look at Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. You will know of that paralytic man that was brought to Jesus. Imagine being paralytic in the body and he got raised. God gave him rest. Or is it in Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48? Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. The woman with the issue of blood. You know how much he has spent. He has spent all her savings. Everything that she has. But God gave her rest. Is it the man by the pool of Bethsaida? In John chapter 5, verse 1 to 15. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 15. That man has been there for 38 years. And God gave him rest. He gave him rest. In the name that is above every other name. I don't know how long that struggle that you have been. I don't know how long that labor has been. God will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2 to 20. I mean, first Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. The Bible says, Who is own sin? Bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. No matter what you are facing, as you are listening to me, I don't know that part of your body that, that has been that has been giving you struggle. Today, in the name that is above every other name, you will receive rest in the name of Jesus. That body is receiving rest in the mighty name of Jesus. God is giving you rest from bodily labor in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, when a woman goes into the labor, after she gives birth, she gets rest. The pain is over. I decree again, once again, in your life, you shall receive rest in the mighty name of Jesus. It could be family war that you need rest from. Maybe there's no fellowship. There's no togetherness. Nothing happens. Again, we know the story of Esau and Jacob. After they have, after God, I mean, after the, uh, Jacob, uh, Esau has eaten the porridge, do you see what happened? They went apart. There were struggles all over the place for the two brothers. They tried to do everything possible to make sure that things go right, but it didn't go right. <laughs> Jacob ran away for 20 years. You can read that story in Genesis chapter 20, 33, verse 1 to 23. Genesis 33, verse 1 to 23. Jacob and his brother, they can't see each other. They do not talk to each other. Maybe in your family as well, you have things like that. You have some people that you cannot talk to. You have some people where you cannot, you cannot share, you cannot share with. Do you know that even though Jacob received that kind of blessing from God, despite all these things, he was still struggling. Hallelujah. Jacob was struggling in fear. He ran away. He had a dysfunctional family. He went to go and marry one person. At the end of the day, he struggles and he married how many? Four. 
I decree to your life this morning. God will give you rest from all family war in the mighty name of Jesus. Every, for every family members of yours, extended and look here, that you have been having issues with, you are getting your rest from it in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe it is financial war that you are facing. God can give you rest in financial war. Now many of us are facing debt. Nowadays, we are debt. You know, some of them, I, I, I got to learn that some people uses debt to pay debts because they want rest so they go and borrow another money to go and pay rest they think that is that is that is rest you can't get rest from that because you are getting into another bondage financial bondage you know in second kings i love this story very well in second kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. second kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. we know the story of that woman the wife of the prophet hallelujah let, 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 let me read it. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take up unto him my two sons for the bondmen. And Elisha says unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy aunt may add not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow these vessels abroad from all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Verse 4 says, And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Verse 5 says, So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And verse 6 says, And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt and leave thou and thy children all the rest. Brethren, I want you to, to take note of this thing very well. Death is not a function of anointing. I know, you know, I, I, I cannot take anointing oil now and pour it on your head and say, no, you are free of death. No, it doesn't work like that. Now, what do we see in this story? This man that is in death, that died, was a priest. He was an anointed man of God. He was a servant. He was, a, he was very faithful to Elisha. He was a pastor. But what did he do? He spread recklessly. And after he spread recklessly, he didn't cater for his family. I hope we are learning the lesson from this thing. And then he died. And after he died, all the debt that he has accrued, the people who he owed came to him to ask for his money. For their money. And because they couldn't get their money, what did they do? They pick his child. Ah, okay, we are going to make your child a slave. I want to I want to beg you in the name of God this morning. If you are listening to me, prepare for your family. Family is important. Now, do you know what, what happened? This man did not prepare for his family. And then the woman. I, I, I think I said it two weeks ago as well. That women, they are always in trouble. The woman was the one that was faced the consequence of recklessness of the man, of the pastor. The woman is made to face a restless life. And she cried to the, to the prophet. Elisha prayed for her and asked us, ask, ask her, what do you have? He said nothing except a jar. Now, what another lesson I want you to learn from this is that there is nobody who doesn't have something. There is nobody who doesn't have something. You see, God did not create human beings, God did not create you specifically not to have something. He has deposited something in you. Elijah the prophet asked the woman, What do you have? 
It's just, you know, she made a mistake. She said she has nothing. She realized that, no, I actually have something. There's something that you also have. Praise the Lord. We all have something that the shepherd can multiply. The Lord multiplied every other thing that, I mean, the, the prophet told the woman, the shepherd is going to multiply. He just gave the instruction. And she was enjoying it until there was no more vessel. I decree to somebody here this morning, I don't know that financial problem that you are going through. I don't know that financial war that you are going through. In the name that is above every other name, I decree rest to it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say I decree rest to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe it is emotional war that you are going through. You've got no joy. You are distressed. But take note of something. Whatever that thing might be that is causing you to be emotional, is emotionally drained. You know, maybe it's your, it's your child. Maybe it's some things that is not making you to have that kind of, of stress that God wants you to have. Remember what we said, Psalm 23 and verse 2. He makes me to lie down. And I said, to lie down means to have rest. If it is emotional rest that you don't have, God is going to release it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, Psalm 16 verse 11, it says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and the right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Or maybe it is spiritual war. That's, that's, the, that's the, the most difficult kind of war that you, can, you need rest from. What do we mean by spiritual war? You know, there are some spirit, the spiritual war is those things that doctors cannot see, they cannot predict. You've got money, you've got, you are not in financial debt, and yet you are not happy. You are in spiritual, you are experiencing spiritual war. Things that x ray cannot detect, that's spiritual war. You don't know the cause. And there are many of these that you are facing as Christians. Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. He said, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Kanya. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That is the kind of spiritual word that we are saying. They are not Kanya. They are not something that you can see. Psalm 127, verse 2. Psalm 127, verse 2 says, It is vain for you to rise up early. To sit, sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow. Do you understand what that means? Somebody will wake up 4 a.m. I, I used to I used to work in, 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 a, in Lagos sometimes. For those of us who have stayed in Lagos very well, we know how busy that place is. You wake up 3 a.m. Start going on the road, and you're only coming back at 11 or 12. No rest. But when the shepherd says he's going to make you to lie down, it means that he's going to put an end to all spiritual battles that you are facing. And I declare to you this morning that God will put an end to all spiritual battles in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are receiving rest from spiritual battles in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's begin to conclude. Why do I need rest? Number one, you need rest to replenish the spirit. You need rest to replenish the spirit. Number two, you need rest to refresh your soul. And you need rest to restore your body. Hallelujah. Amen. You know this body, some people have worked it to the extent that they are not giving it rest. You need rest. For you to function at maximum capacity, you need what? Rest. For you not to be burnt out or to be tired, you need what? Rest. For you to have peace, joy, and serenity, you need what? Rest. You know, 
I know we know the story of Solomon very well. He was a great king. He had wisdom. He had everything. He had. He was the wisest man that has ever lived. He was the richest king that has ever lived. But in all these things, look at what King Solomon said. In 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 4. Solomon says, But now, the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil that occur. I decree to you, I want you to raise your two hands now. At this moment, I decree into your life this moment, God will give you rest on every side in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, it is vain for you to have rest in one side and not to have rest on another side. The shepherd has promised, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to do what? To lie down. He is going to give you rest. Once again, I decree to you that every of your struggles Rest is coming to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is giving you rest on every side in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's possible to have rest if you allow God. Rest that we are talking about is important because God show us. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. God himself rested. He says, God, the heavens and the heart were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And the Bible says, he rested on the seventh day. It means that God has shown us a pattern. And we must do what? He must follow it. He rested. Jesus also rested. In Matthew 6, verse 31. He said, uh, Matthew 6, 31. And he said unto them, Come here yourself apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure, so much as to eat. Say to yourself, rest in wine. Rest in wine. Hey, no, tell to yourself, you are not talking to anybody. Tell to yourself, say rest in wine. Rest in wine. We need rest in this busy world. We need rest in this busy world. In fact, God commanded it that you must rest. You know the commandment of God in Exodus chapter 20. When we get to we can read verse 8 to 11. Say so we should rest. God has commanded for us to rest. To rest. So when David said, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What does it mean? Us to rest. He wants us to rest. If you make God your shepherd, He will take care of your enemies and then you'll be resting. If you make God your shepherd, He will deal with your oppressors and then you will be resting. If you make God your shepherd, He will walk away all your predators and you'll be resting. If you make God your shepherd, he will stay with you and calm you down. And you'll be resting. Where there is God, rest is assured. The reason why the world is restless is because we have removed God from the equation. But as individuals, as Christians, if we make God our shepherd, we are rest assured. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Conditions for rest. We can read Matthew chapter 11, 25 to 30 when we get home. But there are four conditions that I want, I mean, three conditions that I want to give that can give us rest. I mean, that, that it, once we have met that condition, we can be assured of rest. Number one, trust the shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust the shepherd. When we say trust the shepherd, what do we mean? Be a childlike act. Now, when the child is growing up, at a certain age, he listens only end to instructions. Every instruction that he gives is what he listens to. Trust the He doesn't care. If you throw him up like this, he's not afraid that he's going to fall. 
because he trusts the person that is what? That is throwing him off. Don't argue with God. If God says he should forgive that person, forgive. Because God knows. If God says don't come to God, I, I, God says don't, don't argue with me. Don't argue with God. In fact, he doesn't even need to say it. You don't need to argue with God. Don't come to God as an expert. Number two, return to the shepherd. Return to the shepherd. In that Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that are able. There is a place of coming. Once you trust him, you must come unto God and you must trust him that is able to give you rest. Number three, obey him. You know that scripture says in verse 29, it says, Take my yoke. Yoke is not easy, but he said his own yoke is what? It's easy. Take my yoke. Yield to him. Submit to him. Obey him. When you are stubborn, rest is lost. Let's, let's, let, let, let me conclude by saying some of the practical ways that you can rest. Number one, you can relax. Some of us, you can have, we have different form of relaxation. Let's relax. God is in control. When you trust him, when you return to him, when you obey, relax. We can exercise our mind through meditation, through physical exercise. We can sleep. We can turn off all gadgets and just listen. Meditate on God. Listen to God's words and pray. You know, my major thing that I want to leave with you this morning is that you need rest. You need rest. You need rest. You need rest. Let's rise up on our feet. That verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down. The challenge for this week, as I used to give, is that we need to find a day to rest this week. As the challenge I'm giving us. Find a day in this week to rest. Just say, Lord, today I just want to rest and see what God will do in your life. Just one prayer point this morning. And that is, Lord, give me rest. Give me rest. Can we go ahead and begin to pray now? Lord, give me I don't know that aspect of your life that you want to rest from. I to go this
lift up your hands and I will be praying for you. I combine my faith together this morning with everybody listening to me and I decree rest. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord. I decree rest. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Lord. I decree rest from struggles. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord. I decree rest from struggles. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord. I decree rest from struggles. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. I speak rest into our lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I speak rest now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today is regarded to as a Sabbath day. Today is Sunday. And the Bible says on the seventh day he rested. I speak to every struggle into your life this morning. You will receive rest. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. God. You will receive rest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will receive rest Amen. in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. Hallelujah. We accept the Lord, we are our shepherd. Thank you, God. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Maybe you are listening to me this morning. And you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. He cannot be your shepherd. And so therefore, you cannot experience this rest that we are talking unto you. Because it is only those who acknowledge him, who is carrying his yoke, who says he's our, he's a shepherd, he's our shepherd, he's my shepherd, that God will give rest to you. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ? I just want to pray for you. Say after me, Father, I give my life to you. I make you my shepherd. I receive rest from above. I make you to lead me. I make you to make me to lie down. Thank you, Father Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Now you are a sheep in the hands of the shepherd. You are now resting in God's presence. So if you are looking for a Bible living church around you, there's within Christian Church of God almost everywhere in the world. But if you are in Blue Fountain, you can, you can check the, uh, the Facebook profile. The name of our church is Union Christian Church of God, Restoration House. And we meet on Sundays like this, 9 a.m. Try to finish at 11. And on, on Wednesdays from 6 p.m. As you worship with us, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. And God will uphold you, He will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. And if God is laying it in your heart, to drop your offering and to drop your tithes. The account will be given now, will be displayed on the comment section of the Facebook. You can drop it as you do so. We also experience financial rest in the name of Jesus. I want you to believe something that once you make God your shepherd, rest is coming in you. Shall we pray together? Father, we thank you for this day. We give you all the praise for bringing us to your rest, to the place of rest to making us to lie down. Father, we ask the Lord, we receive rest from your struggles in the name of Jesus. We receive rest from struggles in the name of Jesus. This week, you will give us rest. When we come back, we feel our virtual testimony. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Shall we share the grace together? With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.